Hello, I am Zebedee Helm and I am an illustrator. And I recently illustrated this book for the Masons about tea. And today I'm going to show you how to draw this rather dashing grasshopper character who graces the cover of the book and um, plays a prominent role throughout the rest of the book. He's a very useful character to have as a device because of all the arms that he has. And, um, and the fact that grasshoppers have this natural inbuilt sort of Georgian livery, which is very appropriate for performance. So, without more ado, I will show you how to draw him. I'll start with a head, because that's sort of at the top, and you know where you are when you've got the head right. So it's a sort of rugby ball type shaped head. And then we will give him a nice, big, boofy Georgian wig and then straight into the rollers, which all wigs had for some reason. Not quite sure what. And then here I'm doing some shading, which is sort of shading and its hair. Gives the impression of anyway. And then on the underside of these, rolls here which makes them look more like cylinders then it comes down here into a bow and then a little jaunty little pigtail there so there we've got his head now when you come to draw expressions it's very important to really feel the expression in you as you're drawing it um, I just noticed I've got quite a lot of ink on my hand, so you need to be careful with that because else you might get it on the picture. So I'll just, I'll just rub it on this old bit of sheet. But it is a mucky business being an artist. Now, yes, you've got to really inhabit the expression. So for a, a footman, <coughs> you need, you've got to be dignified, but also slightly aloof, not subservient, as if you sort of slightly in on a private joke. But to sort of you raise an eyebrow sort of sort of expression. So we'll put his eyebrow nice and high. And then the eye down there, if we're doing this, the eyelashes and a little sort of slightly knowing sardonic grin. Right, now we move down to the collar, which again, extremely conveniently, is a grasshopper has this sort of thorax thing, which is exactly in the right place and the right sort of stiffness and sort of choking up into the throat of a of a Georgian high neck. Now the wings of the grasshopper which become the tailcoat of our liveried footman and off they go splaying out behind him couple of little buttons up there, a little bit of shading here on the far sided wing. Now, arms, <clears throat> like I say, this is the great advantage of, of a grasshopper, is that they have so many arms, which in this book has been invaluable. So there's one, which is a high one, which the teapot is gonna go on and then one coming out behind him, same sort of height, low on ink. I mean, they last for ages once you've dipped it, and I did that whole thing on one dip. It's pretty impressive. I mean, you forget it's not a fountain pen. Right, <clears throat> so I'm only gonna do the beginning suggestion of that tray, because it's gonna have the cat on it. Um, lower one here, which is going to have the cake on it. You can have as many sort of elbows as you want with grasshoppers. I've no idea how many they have in real life, but you know, no one's going to really pull, pull you up on that as long as it more or less resembles what it's supposed to. And then the fourth and final one here. So we've got space for our objects. They can all, there we go. There we, yeah, there would be space for all of them. Now, 
<clears throat> the jaunty legs. So he's on the move. So we'll do the thighs pointing nice and high. And this is where, again, very conveniently, you have the, the garter there. So this, and in an actual grasshopper, they have these very, very thick back legs where all the power is for the bouncing. Um, and, you, you know, that all that is just like a human thigh, or the ham. And then you have these very fine calves, which is where a grasshopper has the little raised bits there, which I think they rub against each other to make their grasshopper sounds. Um, okay, and then the other one coming down here. There we go. Another garter. <coughs> and the fine calf. And there we go. He's, he's sort of sprinting across with his... In a control. It's a control sprint. Um, now, he has a little glimpse of waistcoat here with some ribs across it which is what a grasshopper has. This is a sort of grasshopper tummy, but it could be a smart, stripy, Georgian waistcoat. And then we have the frogging here, which will have the buttons in it. I don't know if that's the correct terminology. Frogging is, tends to be a bit more sort of military and tassely, but it's... Um, Anyway, it's, it's, it's sort of extravagant sort of gold around the buttons. Right, so we are getting close. It's time to do the feet, I think. So in real life, grasshoppers have just their sort of legs to sort of come to an end. They don't have very um, substantial footwear. But we're going to put our fellow in little Georgian buckled shoes. That's the sort of buckly cuff thing. There, which will be gold. And these are just little sort of scratchy, um, little scratchy shoes. Again, I mean the eye, they don't need to do much there, just a sort of full stop. Um, right, we need some shading here around the underside of the breeches to give an air of solidity. There, it makes it look very real and three dimensional little pointy numbers there off he goes now on his trays he's going to bear of course the classic georgian silver teapot which goes up here the sort of thing that um, everyone used to have and it actually makes the best tea apparently silver teapots I know we all use the clay round ones, but apparently there's nothing, a real tea connoisseur will tell you, there's nothing like the quality of tea from a silver teapot. And you can pick up a silver plate one quite cheaply. I did exactly that. And it's made lovely tea, although the handle fell off when it was full of tea once, which was extremely dangerous. Um, and we'll give it a jaunty there, little squiggle of steam. Right, so there's your teapot. Now, on this tray here, we're going to have the cat in the classic sort of, what's it called? Um, loaf of bread type position. Um, just his eyes there. Give him some curly whiskers. There's his little paws. I mean, he's a little bit too big for this tray, but never mind. There's his back leg, and then a nice sort of cascading tail. Again, a little bit of shading so it's clear where he ends and behind the ears which resemble mountains but he's a cat. Now he also has spots in this book 
which very few cats actually have in real life. Although I did have a cat with a very spotty tummy. I think it was a Bengal cat. So we'll even do spots on the tail. And we are. Right. That's more or less correct. Okay, now here we're going to have the lobster, which obviously is a regular fixture of most afternoon teas. Now he looks a bit startled, which is fair enough because he's about to be eaten. He has his tail and the lovely fan that he has at the back of his tail. And then his pincers, which shoot out the front. The claws, I mean, which are supposedly the best bit to eat. I personally, I think prawns actually taste better than lobsters and they're a lot cheaper. Lobsters can be a bit chewy and it's also, they can live to a very long age. So it does seem a tad cruel eating them when you can perfectly well just eat prawns, which doesn't seem nearly so cruel for some reason. They have less personality than lobsters. <clears throat> his whiskers sort of slash moustache. Then they have these little sort of legs that come out the side, which we'll just do in a sort of zigzaggy thing there. Right, bit of shading there. And that's the lobster done. Platter. There we are. Now we can start on the cake, which I've cunningly combined with a tortoise. I think I might be the first artist to come up with this wheeze. It is, it just occurs to me looking at the succulent photographs in the book of Dundee cakes, and this is a Dundee cake, and then they have these almonds on them, which if you sort of squint generously, could possibly be the scales on a tortoise's shell. Anyway, it occurred to me that this would be a good way of doubling up cakes and tortoises. And now I'm adding the currants, which no self-respecting Dundee cake would be without. I say that, I've never made a Dundee cake. Maybe they have raisins. What's the difference? I know between a raisin and a currant and a sultana. Now I'm going to add the feet of the tortoise. Hmm, it's not obviously a tortoise yet. Let's add the face. There we go. Nice big head. Eyes. Can be sort of looking back a bit. There we are. That's a bit more obviously tortoisey. And then front legs. There we are. Definitely a tortoise. Maybe more tortoise than cake now. This is the thing, you've got to get the balance just right so it's neither too much one thing nor the other thing. Okay. Now he seems to be coming right off his tray. Continued that round there. Okay, we're not 100% happy with that, but I mean, I think it'll do. So, that is the drawing part done. So now I'm going to colour it in, but because I've used non-waterproof ink, I can't colour it in with paints. I have to colour it in on the computer, where we shall now be going. I will be colouring in our grasshopper on Photoshop, which I imagine most of you have. Um, it's an extremely convenient invention. Now, I've already scanned in a sort of watercolour background, which is pretty sort of nondescript. It could be a picnic blanket, um, could be just a sort of grassed over piece of terracing or something. It doesn't really matter, it's just to give him a little bit of context rather than just a harsh white background. Now, that's not actually the right colour for his uh, costume, that's his skin colour, so I'll change it to that, that's correct. Now, 
is his face colour. Which is a lovely sort of froggy grasshoppery green. Doesn't matter if it goes over the edge a little bit, that sort of just adds to the character. The whole thing is the bluey green for his costume. Do his arms in with that, like so. Now, I mean, it's not actually that easy to do quickly Photoshop. You should spend more time, a little bit more time than this, but it doesn't make that much difference if it flows over the edge of the line. Um, in many ways, it, it makes it look more like old fashioned printing when these to go over the edges a lot. Now, his wig is yellow. Here's the yellow. There's the wig. Coming together. Uh, I haven't drawn him for a while, so I can't remember exactly what colour everything is. What colour is his bow? Okay, that's bluey green. Go and then the pigtail needs to be golden like so. Now the collar also is golden, which is easy. I can just go up to the edges and cut it in there. Now the throat line is bluey green, like so. Frogging golden best way to train for using Photoshop is those games used to have at old fashioned sort of village fairs where they had that line, that wire line, that sort of wavy wobbly wire line, which um, you had the little sort of loop hoop on the handle that you had to try and pass over the line without touching the sides. And if you touch the wire, it used to bleed like anything and you'd, you wouldn't win the flapjack or whatever the prize was. That is the best way to train for Photoshop. Okay, now we're on to the breeches, which now they're in colour, you can see far more how they are um, like the hind legs of the grasshopper. Okay. Now, there's a bit of overflow there. You don't want to be too exact, but that's more or less okay. Now, the garters are gold. So, oh, I've totally missed that line. Ah, oh, it's like drunk driving. Not that I've ever done it, but allegedly that is how one steers. Okay, got it. This one, ah, oh, it's quite, yeah, it's quite. Difficult Photoshop to do that quickly. Right, that is our grasshopper done. Now, <coughs> teapot, silver, but obviously they don't have silver colour in the Photoshop. Oops. So we'll do him pale grey. This might be too pale. Yeah, this is too pale, so we'll have to change this colour by going into the colour chart. Oof, right, let's, if we're sort of bluey, bluey grey, let's go for that. Yeah, it's a little bit more teapotty. Um, then they have the Bakelite handles. If we're gonna go all out accuracy here, which, of course we are. There we go. Now the tray itself probably just go for white so it doesn't steal too much tension. Though, okay, in real life, who has a white tray? Like, not me. In fact, I don't think I've got any trays at all. 
So, if anyone wants to get me a present, a tray would be nice. Right, there's the teapot. Now, the cat, which we're going to do in a sort of bricky orange colour. No, we're not, we're going to do in peach because the lobster's going to be bricky orange. Okay, here we are. Ears, pointy ears, round the back. There we go, more or less. Wavy tail. This is where the real wiry skills of that electric game come. Ah, oh, must have done that for. Get rid of that. Right, the spots. I think we're going to go for pink spots. Which will contrast nicely with the. Ah, oh, that's the rubber. There we are. Pink. Oh, it's quite old, my machine. It does things of its own accord. There we are. Okay, spots. Now, eyeballs, white, like the tray. There we are. Right, that's the cat. Now, lobster. Bricky red. The lobster. Oh, did I order some food? Lobster is going to be ah, all one colour, which is nice and easy. Now, if I was doing this for publication, <coughs> I would take more care over this. But just for showing an example, I think this is fine. So, okay, there's a lobster. Lovely. Oh, we forgot to do the tray under the cat and the lobster. Trays. Okay, and this one really shows up the pink of the lobster beautifully. Sort of coral colour. Okay, and there's a little cuff showing here that needs to be golden, and one here golden. Oh, I hate it, it does that, and one here golden. Right, now, Dundee cake tortoise. <coughs> Not easy. Tortoise, tortoise, tortoise. Let's go for brown for the cake. Good fruit cakes. It's steeped. I think this one's probably steeped in tea as well as liqueur. Now almonds. They're a sort of creamy colour. There we are. Doing each one. It's quite fiddly, but worth it. cake element. Now the head of the tortoise is going to be sort of olive green. Khaki. There we go. Back legs were almost there. Eyes of the tortoise. Again, in real life it wouldn't be white, but when you're doing, when you're drawing eyes, it's they show up much better if you just do them more universally. The Labradors, for instance, have sort of maroon coloured eyes, but you draw them in maroon coloured eye, they look really creepy. Right, so there we have it. What we're going to add now finally is a shadow underneath the grasshopper, giving the impression that there we go. It's really skipping along. And there we 